I got a comment the other day on my previous video and I think it was like an intended hate comment about my spendings and somebody said something along the lines of, why would anybody buy a Chanel bag if their bank account is going to be zero at the end of it? And to be honest, I wasn't insulted because I was that girl. I was the girl who let their bank account go to zero for a pair of shoes and I felt like it was the perfect time for me to do like a budgeting video on how I am able to still buy things but also still have a lot of money tucked away. I have never, and I repeat, never been good with money, and I honestly never cared to be good with money. So this is more so of a budgeting for bougie girls kind of video. Get your notepad, get your pen, get a snack, let's hang out. I definitely think that this will help any of my girls or guys out who have never been good with money and didn't learn how to be good with money and had to teach themselves. So, here we go. Okay, so the first tip that I have is to make a small vision board every single year of purchases that you want to make. And the reason why I want you guys to make this vision board is because it allows you to look forward to some things that you want, but it doesn't allow you to kind of venture off. So for instance, let's just say I want this really nice YSL bag, I want a really gorgeous pair of Christian Dior sandals, and I want maybe a brand new phone. Maybe those are the three things that I want this year. So so I put them on my vision board and those are the only things that I'm allowed to buy. I am not allowed to go shopping at a mall and stumble upon a bag and go, ooh, I need this. And what's really great about allowing yourself to have this mood board and something to look at as reference is it keeps you excited, but it allows you to know exactly how much money you're gonna be spending on what and it kind of controls the environment a little bit. I don't make impulsive spending decisions anymore. I actually buy myself things that are on a vision board that I made sure I copy and pasted onto a you know digital space. You can either put it on your Google Docs, you can put it on Pinterest, you can put it in your Instagram save tabs. It could be literally anywhere. And it gives you something to look forward to. And what I've noticed about making this virtual vision board is that I get like really excited to get the piece. There's something to be said when you buy something that you've saved for or that you've looked forward to, that when you receive it, it's so exciting. But when you buy things just because, and it's impulsive, it doesn't feel as good. It's like more so of just like an instant gratification feeling, but it's not like a leading up to an amazing feeling. So you're gonna love this idea if you buy things all the time. Okay, I wanna get into investing or saving your money. I actually never had a savings account. I don't know why. I'm sure I could have easily set one up, but I just never did. I always had a checkings account. And this year, actually, Alex set up an Acorns account for me on my phone, and I had no idea what Acorns was. And it is something like saving your money, but it also invests in stocks for you. And what I love about Acorns is you can set up exactly how much money you want them to take out of your bank account every month. And I actually really enjoy this because I don't even notice I'm taking out money and every time I check my Acorns account, it is really growing. It's cool to be able to make money because you are investing in stocks and the whole point is to let it sit and you know accumulate over time, but you can always take out your money from Acorns if you need it. So it is essentially a savings account that also makes you money. So I really like it. I would definitely do research on your favorite type of investment websites. I'm not super educated on them, but I do know that having in investments and having saving your money smart because you don't want your money to just sit in a bank and do nothing. You want to invest your money always. It's really smart to get involved in investing and stocks and good websites, reputable websites that will allow your money to just keep coming and keep flowing. Okay, I do notice that food is a huge problem for a lot of people. I personally do not do Uber Eats because I don't like live in a city, so it's easy for me to travel to each restaurant. But I will say that when I'm kind of busy and I have a lot going on in a day that I do buy food quite frequently out. And if you follow me on Instagram, what you should, you would know that I buy food out literally all the time. It's probably why I've gained 25 pounds during quarantine. But that's a whole nother topic for another day. I would suggest that instead of just making a grocery list, which is kind of boring, make yourself a menu every week. Now, what I mean by this is kind of have a fixed menu every single week, Sunday through Saturday, and you are going to just write down. Let's just say you say for Monday, I'm gonna have a chickpea wrap 
for lunch and I'm gonna have spaghetti and vegan meatballs for dinner. Tuesday I'm gonna have chili for lunch and Tuesday evening I'm going to have a quinoa vegetable bowl. It could literally be anything. And then you're gonna write on the right side of your menu all the groceries that you need to get for each menu. I think this makes eating a little bit more exciting and cooking a little bit more exciting and meal prep if you need to. Food is really hard and it's annoying and it sometimes can be a burden and you want to be able to make it an enjoyable experience so you don't overspend on eating out and you don't um, you know, make stupid decisions when it comes to your diet. I wanna also suggest that if you're not a huge cook that there are so many different meal services on the market right now that will help you with your meals and they are relatively healthy. They're mostly dinners, but I use Purple Carrot, there's HelloFresh, there's Green Chef. They're all amazing. I've actually tried all of them and I genuinely think that they do save you money because occasionally I will spend about $100 on groceries weekly for um, dinner and HelloFresh, Purple Carrot, or Green Chef only are about like $70. So you're saving like $30 a week and you have like a gourmet, amazing menu. I would suggest those two options and you will feel like you are budgeting out your food a lot better. As somebody who is a Starbucks connoisseur, I'm, you know, their best customer, I needed to cut back. I mean, if I'm gonna be honest with myself, my drink is 6.02 a day, okay? So let me just quickly grab my phone and do the math. So if I went to Starbucks every single day of the week, it would be about $42 a week, and that's about $168 a month on a friggin' chai tea latte. So I am a little bit embarrassed because I do love Starbucks, but I will say that having your own barista stand at your house will encourage you to continue drinking what you like, but it will save you a ton of money. I actually created like the perfect barista stand at my house and it has actually like Starbucks elements to it. So I ordered the Starbucks vanilla and hazelnut pumps from Amazon and they were really affordable. And then you can kind of get coffee or you can get matcha or you can get chai tea and this will just save you so much more money. So cut back on coffee, tea or whatever in the morning. It's ridiculous. Like I'm embarrassed that I let myself get to that point. And I was doing that when I had like no money. So I would suggest to just make coffee at home and to get Starbucks occasionally and like use it as like a treat and not as a daily activity. Let's talk about building credit as a spender. So a little bit about me, I never had a credit card growing up and I've been working since I was 14. So I never had built credit ever. And I was kind of shocked to know that when you don't build credit, you can't get an apartment, you can't get a car, you literally can't do anything without credit. So even though everyone scares you and tells you how bad credit is, it's actually really important and crucial for your life. But if you're a big spender, you know you're not gonna be paying back your credit cards. There are two ways that I would suggest to build credit that are a little bit better and easier. So one being a car payment is credit. So obviously you do need a good credit to get a car, but let's just say you had somebody co-sign your lease for you, your parents bought you a car. If you are paying your car payments yourself every month, it actually builds really good credit. Another way to do building credit is to have a store credit card, whether that's a home goods card or a Victoria's Secret card, or I actually have a lot of um, furniture store cards because I was buying a lot of furniture for my apartment. So I have like a Pottery Barn card, a West Elm card. And what's really great about this is you cannot spend these cards outside of the store. So it's easier to narrow down your purchases. It's easier to not kind of fall off into credit card debt because you do not want that at all. And I just find that I am more running a tight ship when it comes to paying them off. And I know exactly where my money is going and it's into my home. So it's essentially an investment. And I find that this is a really easy way to build credit without you know, being crazy and getting yourself in debt. And if you are kind of struggling with figuring out how to get a credit card, store credit cards are the way to go. And they usually approve you without any credit at all. You just have to give them your annual income and they will approve you on site. So get yourself a store credit card, make sure you pay it off early or at least on time and you will not have an issue and you'll build credit pretty fast. 
Okay, so this tip is for like all of my fashion girls, all of my people who love to keep up with trends. And honestly, I do too. Like I wouldn't say that I'm a trendsetter. I wouldn't even say I'm like a super trend follower because I'm not super fashionable. Like I'm trying, but I'm not quite there yet. But I will say that buying basics will never go out of style, whether that's like a tan blazer or a black turtleneck or some gorgeous trousers or a great cashmere sweater. They will never go out of style. So what I would say is to really build your wardrobe off of basics and then you'll save so much more money so that you can invest in small trendy pieces when they start to come in. So let's just say the trendy thing of the fall 2021 would be Doc Martens. You will only have to buy Doc Martens. You won't have to buy a whole new wardrobe. It's just the shoes. So I would say basics are the way to go because they never go out of style. You won't need to be shopping constantly and you'll be able to kind of narrow down your purchases a little bit better. Right now, gold jewelry is super in. So all you have to do is layer gold jewelry on any top that you already own and you're good to go. I find that this is the easiest way to not overspend on clothing items because you can get carried away over here and you just wanna be careful with that. Clothes are fun and they're amazing and they make you feel really good and it's important to invest in the way you look. But if you can buy basics that will always make you look good and will never age out, you can't go wrong and you'll be able to spend more money on bags, shoes, accessories, and all the above. So that's my tip for that. Okay, so this tip is very personal to me and I actually have been saying this my entire life. So this is kind of the quote of the day. I would rather have a small house with a million things in it than have a big house with nothing in it. And I want you guys to really hear that and listen. I really love when I meet people and they are not trying to keep up with the Joneses in the sense that they need to have the biggest, loudest, lavish lifestyle and they can't even keep up with it. You should never be overpaying for rent. You should never be overpaying for a car payment. My rent and my car payment are doing nothing to my money. I find that these purchases are extremely easy to pay off. I am not suffering every month. And I want you guys to feel the same way when it comes to buying things. Let's just say you make $3,500 a month, right? Do not get a $2,500 apartment. It doesn't make sense. You want to make sure that your expenses where you aren't really living luxurious, like I'm trying to explain this in the best way that I can, but where you live and what you drive should not be what's draining your bank account. It doesn't make sense. You should never let your home and your car be the only purchases that you can afford. You should make sure that your car payment is low, that your apartment rent is low or your house rent or whatever it is, even if it's your mortgage, you want to make sure it's low so that you can have more money to spend on other things. I tend to notice that a lot of people who make a lot of money, they will buy something that is pretty much how much money they make and then they can never keep up with it. So I kind of want to give you guys a more inside look on how I save my money. And I have actually numbers written down right here because I want you guys to kind of understand what I'm trying to say. This is dummy proof, okay? Like I just learned about how to be smart with money. So I'm sure there's going to be somebody who's like, oh my God, obviously. Listen, this is for all of my people who need a little bit of help when it comes to budgeting. I know I did. I was not smart. I would watch videos like this and I wouldn't understand a word they were saying. So I have really, and I mean really made this easy to understand. So back to what I was saying. Let's just say I make $10,000 a month, right? This is just hypothetical. Let's just say $3,000 is for me a month. That is plenty of money to go around. You can do a lot with $3,000 a month. You can go shopping, get your hair done. You can buy groceries. You can do whatever you want with $3,000 a month. So you can do 10,000 minus 3,000 is what? $7,000. So you have $7,000 still. So $7,000 minus 3,500 equals 3,500, right? So 3,500 goes into my savings account or investments as soon as the money comes in. That is $42,000 a year strictly in a savings account. That's so easy to do. I mean, it really is. Now, obviously, that is a really high number making $10,000 a month, but I just wanted to give you guys a goal to understand and you can put as much money away as possible. You wanna give yourself a percentage. Let's just say you wanna do the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of the money is for yourself, 20% is for you know, anything else like savings. I would say that the 80-20 rule is like for really crazy spenders. I would stay in the 60-40 range, okay? You don't have to do 50-50, 
50-50 sounds sometimes like a lot, and I'm trying to help, you know, all of my spenders and my bougie girls out there because I don't want you guys to be turned off by the entire experience. So start off with the 60-40 rule where you have 60% to yourself and 40% goes to bills and savings. That's pretty good. And then you can work it down depending on the month. Sometimes you might even do um, only 20% to yourself. You never know. It, it depends on the month, but I would suggest that you always give yourself a rule in your head so you can follow it easier. You're going to be able to buy a house one day, or let's just say you want to open up your own clothing store or restaurant or start a business, or it doesn't matter. It could be anything. Maybe you have a wedding coming up and you have to pay for it yourself. Maybe you can just look at it from that perspective. I want to go into the last tip, which is essentially to look at saving and budgeting your money in a more luxurious way. So let's just say that you want to have an amazing retirement. Dream really big when you think about it. Don't look at it like, oh, I'm going to be old and enfeebled and in a home. Look at it as I want to be able to travel in my late 50s and be on a yacht and drink mimosas with my husband and you know, maybe be in the Amalfi Coast or anything like that. And it will be more of an incentive for you to save up for those times because you are dreaming so luxurious. And there's nothing wrong with amping up your life and looking forward to a goal that maybe feels a little bit out of reach, but it's beautiful and it's luxurious and it's happiness. It will feel really good to save your money if you have, you know, high expectations for yourself. I just know that you guys are going to be so happy when you start budgeting, saving, investing in yourself and in your life and in your future. If you guys have any questions, please leave them down below and I will answer them promptly. And if you have any tips for how to budget or how to save your money or what you do personally, let me know. I think we are in an era and in a day and age where you know saving is just not enough. Investing is becoming the new thing. Hopefully that helps. Again, don't forget to let me know down below what you guys do to budget. I love you guys so much. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I will see you guys in my next video. Mwah. Bye, guys.